Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Outer Rim Cantina. My name's Alan and today I am back for a weekly Star Wars news roundup and boy oh boy do we have a lot of news thanks to the D23 Expo that just took place last night. We have a bunch of new announcements for three Disney Plus series including The Mandalorian and a bunch of other stuff. So let's just go ahead and jump into it starting off with this article that was published on StarWars.com last night as well titled The Galaxy Far Far Away Just Got a Little Bigger. Guests at Disney's D23 Expo in Anaheim today received a sneak peek at all three new streaming series set in the Star Wars galaxy, gearing up for launch and one fan favorite that will be returning in February. First up will be The Mandalorian, the action-packed series executively produced by Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni that follows the travels of a lone bounty hunter in the outer reaches of the galaxy after the fall of the Empire. Stars Pedro Pascal, Gina Carano, Carl Weathers, Giancarlo Esposito, I probably butchered that, Ed, pardon me, and Taika Waititi join Favreau and Filoni to share a first look at the series with its first official trailer. In addition, Ming-Na Wen was announced as a cast member. The Mandalorian will make its debut exclusively on Disney Plus when the service launches in the US on November 12th. So yes, we finally got the first official trailer for The Mandalorian, and if you haven't seen it, it's already gotten over 5 million views on YouTube. It's number one on trending, at least right now when I'm recording this, but go watch it. It is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my whole life. Like, it, it it's one of the greatest Star Wars trailers I've ever seen. Like, I got serious Rogue One vibes from it, but with a more uh, Western style to the story and the show and everything like that. So just everything's about everything about it is amazing. Just go watch it. And also, if you don't know who Ming-Na Wen is, uh, she is an actress on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where she plays Agent May, just a complete badass S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. So she is definitely a great addition to the cast and will only make this show even better. But moving on from that, next, the Emmy Award winning animated series Star Wars The Clone Wars will make its triumphant return in February of 2020. Fans created a global hashtag Save the Clone Wars campaign several years ago for creator Dave Filoni to be able to finish the series, and their voices were heard. The series will finally provide the epic conclusion to the critically acclaimed series that fans have been asking for, bringing the story up to the events of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith and Order 66. And I really, really hope, again, that we do get to see uh, at least a part of Order 66 in the Clone Wars, or at least where uh, Ahsoka and Rex both fake their deaths and then uh, go their separate ways. That's mentioned in the Ahsoka novel, but I would really, really love to see that in the actual show, in, in animated form. I think that would be really, really cool. Next, Diego Luna and Alan Tudyk were on hand to discuss reprising the roles as Rebel Cassian Andor and a fan-favorite security droid turned Rebel hero K2SO. For a third hotly anticipated series exploring the story of the Rebel Heroes before the events of Rogue One, a Star Wars story, Luna and Tudyk discuss the reunion of the two characters who share an intriguing past. So that is part of the brand new Cassian Andor show that will probably be coming after The Mandalorian uh, in, in sometime in 2020. Uh, so that'll be really cool. I'm really looking forward to that because I just I love Cassian Andor and K2SO as characters. Like I loved them in Rogue One, and especially them together, just it's hilarious. I love it. There's there's literally nothing to dislike about that pair. It's great. The Disney Plus panel was the first to announce an all-new Star Wars series in development, one that many fans have been asking to see since the closing scenes of 2005's Revenge of the Sith. Ewan McGregor, who played Obi-Wan Kenobi, electrified the audience when he emerged following the announcement of his involvement in a new series taking place eight years after the events of Revenge of the Sith, where we last saw Obi-Wan delivering the infant Luke Skywalker to his Tatooine homestead. So there you have it, the official, official announcement for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series on Disney+. Plus. I already made a video on that last week if you want to go uh, check that out, where I basically talk about what I think of Ewan McGregor. 
Ewan McGregor coming back, and uh, the idea of like the anthology films moving from like standalone one-off films to actually being uh, to being like full-length series or mini-series on Disney Plus. But moving on from Disney Plus, we also got news of the new Star Wars Hotel that is going to be with Galaxy's Edge in Walt Disney World Orlando. So here on the D23 website, it says, If you've ever wanted to vacation in a galaxy far, far away, your wish is about to come true. The all-new Star Wars vacation experience coming to the Walt Disney World Resort, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, invites guests to embark on a two-night adventure aboard a glamorous starship. During this first-of-its-kind vacation experience, you'll interact with characters and become an active participant in immersive stories that unfold over the course of an unforgettable galactic journey on board the Star Cruiser, to be called the Halcyon, or Hal Halcyon Halcyon, I'm pretty sure it's Halcyon. But there you have it, the Star Wars Hotel, it sounds like it's not actually going to be like one of the standard hotels, kind of like what everybody was thinking. Uh, it's actually going to be like its own separate uh, vacation experience over two nights. And basically it's going to be, I guess, like a Disney Cruise type thing, except entirely in the Star Wars universe and you're not actually on a boat in the ocean, you're in, uh, supposedly in this giant spaceship. So that'll be really, really cool to know some more information about that when it gets closer to opening. We finally get some news about that. That's one thing that they've kind of, they've actually really kept under wraps since uh, the announcement of Galaxy's Edge and uh, even since the opening of Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland. On top of all of this, we also got some brand new footage from The Rise of Skywalker. It was only about four or five scenes, and uh, so there really wasn't much there, but what they did show was absolutely amazing. For one, we get the Darth Vader helmet coming back once again from The Force Awakens. We see Kylo Ren, supposedly the main villain of the film, being surrounded in all white which is something we haven't seen before, so that plays into the whole imagery of good versus evil and blah 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 blah. I could probably make an entire video on just that one scene alone, but we also uh, hear Rey say, no, it's too dangerous, I need to go alone, when she's talking to Finn and Poe, Then we see the whole gang in the Millennium Falcon together with Chewbacca, and it was just, it was a great, great tease, but I hope the full trailer uh, gets released before October, that would be nice, but I don't think that, that's probably not going to happen, uh, and actually just before I started recording this video, they released the brand new official poster for The Rise of Skywalker, so we see uh, Palpatine in like a ghost kind of form in the background with lightning and just darkness all around, and in the center we see Rey and Kylo Ren who Kylo Ren has the high ground in this. I'm not sure if that's going to matter in the end or not, but I just think that's interesting. But there, uh, Rey and Kylo Ren are about to duel each other with Palpatine kind of looking down on them with a with this little bit of a smirk on his face. And on top of this, apparently there was a behind-the-scenes panel for The Rise of Skywalker that took place today, actually, uh, that revealed some brand new footage. And even though we haven't seen the footage yet, I don't think it's actually being released to the public until Monday. I could be wrong about that. But uh, what I do know right now is that there was a scene with Rey dressed in all black with a cloak and a red double-bladed lightsaber. So that'll be pretty interesting, and some people say that, like, she kind of sort of looked like she was under some kind of spell, so perhaps Palpatine kind of possessed her for some reason, or, uh, dude, I don't know, but it just sounds amazing. I can't wait to actually see this footage, and when I'm actually able to, I will definitely be making an analysis video on it, uh, so stay tuned for that probably uh, next week, either Monday or Tuesday. And the last thing for this uh, news update video I've seen on Twitter, YouTube, and just social media in general, a lot of people asking for an uh, MCU-esque timeline, but for Star Wars, and well, they also delivered that at D23, so here is the official Star Wars timeline showing all of the live action and animated media in the Star Wars universe, divided up in between the Age of Republic, Age of Rebellion, and Age of Resistance. 
So this is updated with all of the past and future content coming to the Star Wars universe. So we have, you know, the Clone Wars, Solo, we got the Obi-Wan Kenobi series listed in there, Cassian Andor, The Mandalorian, Star Wars Resistance, Galaxy's Edge. It's all there. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm actually really, really happy with how this turned out. And uh, I hope they continue doing this in the future as uh, they give us more stories in either live action Disney Plus series or uh, animated series form. It'll be very interesting to see how this timeline uh, evolves and progresses as we move on, you know, past the Skywalker saga and move into like Ryan Johnson's trilogy and the Binoff and West trilogy and all of that kind of stuff. It'll be very, very interesting to see uh, the future of Star Wars play out on this same kind of timeline thing. But that, as of, as of right now, at least, that is it for all of the Star Wars news from D23. Uh, there will probably be more that pops up after I've already filmed this video, and if there is, I will be sure to talk about it in more videos next week. Until then, though, that's all the time I've got for today. I'd love to know what you guys think of all of this brand new Star Wars news down in the comments, whether it be the Disney Plus series, the Clone Wars, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, the new poster, the uh, supposed um, Rise of Skywalker scenes, all that kind of stuff. I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments. For now though, I think I am just about done here. I will see you guys back here on Tuesday for another Star Wars video. Until then, may the Force be with you. Bounty hunting is a complicated profession. Don't you agree?